All right, folks, I just erased a video that I spent about 10 minutes working on, so let's do it again. How to find the rate. This is the problem that is in A1 on page 59 of your book. It's how to take a uh, principal amount to a future value in <coughs> excuse me, in one and three quarter years compounded quarterly. The trick to these questions is that you put in the number of periods uh, think quarters, days, years, minutes, seconds, whatever the period is that you put into your equation, that is the rate you're going to get out. If you put in quarters, you're going to get a quarterly rate out. We want to always bring it to an annual rate. That's the convention. So we're going to get an answer to this question by doing the algebra. Here's the algebra. And we come out with this point one nine seven nine three five, which we multiply times 4 to get the 7.92. And the point is, always remember that your formula returns a value equal to the rate per period. Okay? Now, let's cheat. Here we go. To cheat on this one, you clear your financial registers, and there are five of them in the 12C. There's an N, which is number of periods, I, which is the interest rate, PV, which is present value, payment, which is for a cash flow, we're not there yet, and future value. So you're going to enter a negative number for your principal amount. You're going to assume that you're paying the 1700 to the bank or to whomever is going to pay you the interest and then the future value is positive is what you get back. So enter 1700, change it to a negative number, push the PV key. Enter 1950, push the FV key. Now enter the number 7 just hit 7 on your keypad and hit the N key. Next thing you do is you just push the I key and it will solve for you. You'll see 1.98 or a number of decimals depending on your settings. Multiply that times 4 and you've got your, your annual rate 7.92 which is a great check. Learn to do this math. It's very important that you know how to do the math without the calculator but it's also important that you're you have faith in your ability to double check your answers with the financial registers. Alright, let's go do another problem. 3,000 goes to 3,285 in 253 days. The trick is you set up your formula dividing R by 365 and, and setting the N at 253 which is your number of periods, your days. You solve for it, you get that big old decimal uh, and remember you're going to have rounding errors depending on how many of these numbers you bring through the calculation and you get 13.09 percent. The easy way to do this is just clear your financial registers, enter a negative 3,000 for present value, enter 3,285, push future value, and then 253 is your N. And when you push I, the number that comes up needs to be multiplied by 365 and you've got the right answer. Okay, I just noticed that I'm telling you to enter numbers. When I say enter the numbers, I'm just saying push them on your keypad. I'm not saying to push the enter key. Uh, the way these registers work is fairly simple, but uh, practice with it until you understand what I'm saying. You enter the numbers that you know, and then you push the key corresponding to the value that you're trying to solve for, and the computer figures it out for you. So practice that on all of these questions in section 3.7 so that you can take any rate forward. I'm going to give that to you for a quiz and I'm going to ask you to do it with the algebra. So I'm going to set it up so that you have to enter intermediate steps to, to get the points. Another kind of problem that you're going to face with the uh, uh, compound interest section is that you're going to be given alternatives and asked to calculate what is the preferable alternative. So if I give you a principal amount and I tell you what the rate is and the compounding factor, you need to be able to set up your formula. It's quite simple. Let's check out the 5.23 percent compounded daily. Okay, We start with our uh, S equals P times 1 plus I to the N. Remember it's compounding daily so your N is going to be 365 and whatever your rate is you're going to divide it by 365. So when you run, run the math, uh, if you invest the uh, 
the fifty thousand. You can pick when you're when you're asking about which one performs better. Just pick a year, and I say pick a year because then the math uh, math gets to be really simple. Uh, you're just going to hit three hundred and sixty-five days, and when you come down to the quarters, you can just pick four. So when you see a problem like this that says, "What are you going to do?" If, it, if there's an assumption you can make that makes it easier, make it easy on yourself. And so we calculate both of those, and it looks to me that 5.75 compounded quarterly down here comes out to be your better answer. Again, know this formula. You have got to be able to put that uh, down on paper from memory and to manipulate it with your 12C. Uh, also, at this point, you should be able to now practice with your financial registers and get the same answer without going through the, uh, the algebra. All right, we talked about logarithms. The logarithm is only going to be a factor when you need to solve for a time period. When you need to solve for the n, you have to algebraically get that n to the point where you can set it equal to something. And the way you do that is you come down and use that logarithm. Okay, look at step uh, three here. When I what I'm doing to get rid of that n here, that's an exponent, is I'm taking the log of both sides. That allows me then to pull that n out, so that I it results in n times uh, log one plus i. So remember that step so that you can do this math. Let's go back up here. Here's what I asked you to do. How many days? Does it take for $2,500 to double at 6.75% interest compounded daily? So you know that your future value is going to be 5000 and you know that your interest is going to be divided by 365. So let's go through the math. Here's the math. And uh, my math gets me an answer of 3,731 days. Now, I did this on the financial registers and it came up at 3749 which actually was a better fit and what's happening here is that your calculator is only showing you so many significant digits and when you use the financial registers it uses many more significant digits and you're not doing intermediate steps and you lose a little bit of a rounding factor each time you do one of these steps so the financial the financial registers give you a better answer but you need to know how to start with your basic S equals P times your interest factor raised to the number of periods and you need to know how to manipulate that to solve for time periods, rates, interest amounts, anything that I might throw at you. Okay, let's do this on the registers. Enter your negative 2500 for your present value, your 5000 for your future value, and here's the problem we were having. Remember that the I key is set up to take an interest rate so you can just enter for example if this were an annual problem you'd enter 6.75 not 0.0675 so because this is a daily problem you're gonna first take 6.75 divide it by 365 and then push I that's your I and then when you hit in it will spit out for you that 3749 that we saw earlier 3749 so practice with those, get comfortable, uh, now you start to see the power of that 12C.